This is the second lecture for section 1.6 on minimum spanning trees. In this lecture, we'll see some more examples using Kruskal's algorithm, which we learned about in the previous lecture. So remember that what we're looking for is a minimum spanning tree for a graph. Minimum meaning that we want the lowest total cost. Spanning means that we want all of the vertices in our graph to connect to each other through the network that we're building. And then a tree just means that there are no circuits, no unnecessary edges that create loops that we don't need. We talked about Kruskal's algorithm, which is a step-by-step -step process that looks like this. We start with none of the edges of the graph being part of our solution, and then we add the edges one at a time, starting with the cheapest edge, but we don't add an edge if that would create a circuit. Remember, for a tree, we don't need any circuits at all. So we skip over any edges that would create a circuit, and we keep going until we have every vertex of our graph connected to our network. So for this example, we're gonna use Kruskal's algorithm to find our minimum spanning tree. So remember that we're gonna start with none of the edges being part of our network, and we're gonna add edges one at a time, starting with the cheapest edge. So we look at all of the different weights on all of these edges, and we try to find the lowest number that we can find, and that's gonna be 1.4 connecting vertex B to vertex C. Of course, we're not done yet because again, at the end of this, we wanna have a network that connects all of the vertices together, and we certainly don't have that yet. So we find our next cheapest vertex, the uh, next cheapest edge, I should say, which connects vertices A and H, that's 1.8. So we use that edge, that's part of our solution now. And again, we're still not done, not everything's connected to each other yet, so we keep going. Next up is 2.0, that connects A to E, that's the next lowest number that I see on this graph. So we connect those together. Still don't have everything connected yet. The next lowest number that I see is the 2.1, that connects H to E. Now, if I use that edge, let's just sort of temporarily uh, fill it in here. What you might notice is that now I have a circuit that connects A, H, and E. Now remember, our point of our solution here is that we don't wanna have any circuits, so we don't wanna use that edge. So that one gets crossed out. I'm just gonna cross it out so that it makes it a little easier when I'm looking for my lowest numbers. I'm not gonna think about that number 2.1 anymore. Next up is the number 2.3 that connects A to B. So this edge gets added to my graph. Again, that doesn't create any circuits. I'm getting closer, so my network connects a lot of the vertices together, but I'm still missing F and G, so I need to keep going. Next up, I've got 2.4, that's my next cheapest edge. So that's gonna get connected. Now at this stage, every vertex is connected to something, but it's still not one connected network. So I'm not done yet, because I don't have one complete network that connects all of my edges together. The next lowest number that I see on the graph is 2.7, but if I were to use that edge, then that would create a circuit connecting vertices A, B, C, and H, and I don't need any circuits, so I'm gonna cross that one out. Next up, I've got 2.8, that's gonna connect E to F. That doesn't create any circuits, so I'm gonna add that to my graph, and now I'm done. Now I have a, a network, a tree, that connects all of my vertices to one single network. So this would be my solution for my minimum spanning tree. And again, as before, some of these more expensive edges we never even considered because we finished our problem before we got to that point. So here's another example, a little bit different, but still same idea. We've got this map and we've got a bunch of bridges going between different parts of the city. And so what we wanna do is pick the cheapest network of edges. So those numbers there represent the cost of maintaining those bridges. And so if we wanna shut down some bridges and keep it cheap, then we wanna use the lowest numbers that we can. So we create a graph that represents this situation. So each of the four land masses here is represented by a vertex, and then each of the bridges gets represented by an edge. And I've labeled the numbers from the picture on my graph here. And now we're gonna start using Kruskal's algorithm. So the cheapest bridge is this bridge here, this 15, connecting Little Island to East Shore. So that becomes part of my network. So I'm gonna shade that in here. My next lowest number is the 25, which connects Bay Island to East Shore. So I'm gonna use that bridge. My next lowest number is this 30, which connects Little Island to East Shore, but I've already got Little Island connected to East Shore, so I don't wanna use that edge. So I'm gonna cross that out. Next up, I've got 35, that connects North Shore to Bay Island. So that's this edge here. And now I'm actually done because every one of my four land masses is connected to my uh, network. So again, when we think about efficiency here, if I wanted to actually use this network to drive from Little Island to 
North Shore, I would have to go from Little Island to the East Shore, go over here, cross this bridge, and then go from here and cross this bridge. So it might look inefficient, but at least I can get there, right? So if I didn't use as many bridges, if I got any fewer of the bridges that I used here, then I wouldn't even be able to get there at all. So that's the idea here. Now I just want to talk a little bit more about sort of the real world considerations here. So if we had three points, and let's say these uh, numbers represent the distances between these points, 8, 13, and 16. If we used Kruskal's algorithm in this situation to create a network, then the solution would look something like this. We would use the 8 and the 13, those are the cheaper edges, and we wouldn't need the 16 because I can get from B to C by going up here from B to A and then going down here from A to C. So that would be my Kruskal's algorithm solution to find the smallest network that connects the three points. But sometimes there might be a reasonable way to think about having a fourth point that would be somewhere in the middle, right? So located in the center of that triangle, somewhere where the total of these three distances, this distance, this distance, and this distance, would be less than the 21 that I would get by taking the 8 and the 13. And if we're in a situation where we can go to that, we can sort of invent this fourth point, uh, then that point is called the geometric median. So that's the point that would be the minimum total distance away from the three existing points. But this isn't always going to work. So for example, if you think about the bridge problem, we can't invent a new landmass, right? So we can't invent a new vertex uh, that might be out in the water somewhere that might be the minimum distance between the original points. So we can't always create this new point, but in some geometric situations, we actually can. So that's just something to think about where this Kruskal's algorithm, when we say it gives the best solution, we mean the best solution with the restrictions that we're putting on ourselves, which is that we can only use the edges that we started with. So in the real world, sometimes we can kind of think outside the box a little bit and create new points to get better solutions.